Good evening everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now we have a lovely program lined up for you tonight. We have of course have our usual news every Friday. We also have my latest challenge that I did so you'll be able to see how I got on. I'll be answering a question from a viewer in the What Would Chrissy Do section and we're going to be speaking about eyebrows tonight. So we have Leanne and Jessica from Anessis Spa and Clinic who specialise in high definition brows so they'll be answering all your questions about shaping and colouring and all sorts of things a bit later on in the show and I've got my own questions to ask too. But first of all, let's speak to the lovely Excel who I must say is looking beautiful tonight. Oh, How darling. are you Excel? Thank you, thank you. I think my eyebrows need a bit of um, taming so I should definitely be making the most of your guests today. <laughs> okay, yes, you've got yes. your questions to ask them, have you? Yes, I have, yes, Good. indeed. <laughs> How not to have a monobrow. Oh, I'm giving it away. <laughs> You don't have a monobrow. I used to. <laughs> I know, of course. Well, my father wouldn't let me pluck my eyebrows, even though I was in my teens, because he was a bit strict, you see. Oh, no. So I had, like, a unibrow for a number of years. Well, I'm sure That's you why I didn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think quite that, later on in I life. think that was what he actually wanted to do. Don't date. And exactly. so his own way of doing it, no, no shaping of That's eyebrows. That's a good way, isn't it, too, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. <laughs> used to have for us excel well i have a i have a few um you know some interesting bits um to to share with our guests today actually i think i'll start off with the um i suppose the most shocking one if i can say okay imagine you're having breakfast uh -huh. and um you have your say just let's just pretend you have kids and um you're having breakfast in mcdonald's enjoying your happy meals or happy breakfast and then all of a sudden you start hearing a song with lyrics that makes reference to extreme sex acts with children, prison rape <gasps> and violence. What? Yes. Oh no. This is what happened in a McDonald's store in a place called Pembrokeshire and they were, um, you know, they, all the parents had sat down, this was about nine o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden this music comes mm -mm. on. Apparently it's by this rap, rap artist called Ruka Ruka Ali. Never okay. heard of him. Um, it's apparently a four-minute track, and basically the lyrics of the track of this of this song are, are too explicit to even describe. Mm -hmm. Basically, but apparently it is just it's disgusting. And McDonald's blamed, well, they apologized seriously for this um, for playing the explicit music because it's, it was pornographic content basically. Mm -hmm. But they blamed an employee who had done the night shift and he had um, hooked up his iPod to the sound system overnight oh and um, he forgot to remove it the following Oops. morning when he went home. Yeah. So breakfast was... So uh, everyone knows what he's been listening to now. Well, exactly, mm. which is absolutely shocking, I would say, but mm. but um, apparently they, um, like I said, they've, they've, they apologised profusely I hope for, they refunded the Happy Meals. I know. You know, it doesn't say that in the report, <laughs> but I hope they did. But all they could say was they apologised and they, had, they were going to remind all the staff about company policy. How, well, how could he hook it up? They must have been listening to it during the night. How could he hook it up by mistake to... Well, I suppose, you know, I know all things, you know, late night snacking and all that. I suppose some McDonald's are 24 hours, mm. but they're not 24 hours in the restaurant. They're 24 hour drive through. So oh, maybe so he would have to... hooked it up whilst he was in there serving the customers and okay. then he forgot to, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Lovely mm. inspiring music content while you're working. Yeah, indeed. Yes. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Yes, indeed. Actually, this is, this, this is quite hilarious. Um, I think I remember we talked about this on the program um, not long ago, about how people sort of ask you, have you got a boyfriend, have you got a girlfriend, etc., etc. But now, as usual, it's America. They've come up with... <laughs> And we love our American <laughs> friends, Excel. We do, we love them, but they have some crazy <laughs> ideas sometimes, you know, seriously. There is an invisible girlfriend app. Of course. Yes. This okay. app is designed to help men keep prying family and friends at bay with what is said to be, believe, to be believable, virtual and real world proof that you have a partner, even if you don't. Mm. Basically, what it is, it provides phone calls voicemails, <laughs> random gifts, and evidence to end all evidence is a Facebook relationship. Oh, no. So it even gives you the status that you are in a relationship. Do you know what? I know it sounds crazy, but I can totally understand why some people would want this. Let me finish. Because, you know those 
relatives that right. are forever asking, have you got a boyfriend yet? When are you getting married or girlfriend? And they just go on and on and on. And it makes people, some people feel really, really bad for being single. Mm. So I can understand, I'm not saying like it's a great it's idea, but I can understand why some people would go for it because they'd rather pretend to have someone than have people on their backs all the time. Fair enough, but what are you going to say when you kind of need to bring them over for Christmas dinner? It hasn't got to that stage yet. <laughs> okay, darling, you've been dating this girl now for six months. May we see her for dinner one evening? What are you going to say? <laughs> All I'm but, saying is I can understand why some people would go for it. But I have to say, this is, this is the joke of it as well. It says pricing is on a month-to-month -month basis and it ranges from $9.99 for the just talking package. You see, it's named. They've got their packages have names. So <laughs> the just talking package is $9.99. Per month. But yes. Mm -hmm. And the almost engaged package. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. It's $49.99. So what do you want? Mm, we're, we're still talking like for like oh, a year. You know what? I was just thinking maybe there's people that really do want to be in a relationship and they just get it so they can pretend to be with someone. You see, for me, sad. I find it that's slightly more dangerous. Mm. I'd rather sort of like be genuinely miserable than be virtually <laughs> miserable. Because if you're virtually happy, you mean? Exactly, sorry, yeah, that's what I meant, sorry. <laughs> genuinely miserable, miserable than, than be virtu virtually happy. Because then when you're yeah. really miserable, in a sense, it kind of encourages you to go out there and find someone. But when you kind of lull yourself into this yeah, false sense of security, mm. you think, yeah, I've got, I've, I've got a boyfriend. Yeah, we're, we're engaged. See, it's on I Facebook. I even get presents from him. Yeah, I even get presents. Like, right? And you just think, mm, mm. no, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I think... It, it, Guys, if, you know, if you've got any problems in your love life, there's a fantastic show called Love Talk on this channel as well. Indeed. <laughs> you should look it up. Indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, the... Um, the person who created this um, app says, we're giving them a better story to tell, even if the story isn't true. So now they're also currently developing the invisible boyfriend. Oh no, okay. Yes. Not good. <sighs> well, moving on swiftly to a slightly more hilarious, another hilarious um, news. I think it's all hilarious news today. We all know about the old Michael Tyson, uh, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield fight where he bit off his ear, right? Yes. Okay. Well. There is um, a company, <laughs> a sports company, that has taken advantage of this and has actually created an advert which shows Mike Tyson going to the home of Evander Holyfield, ringing the doorbell and saying, sorry, I'm really sorry, here's your ear back. <laughs> I kept it in formaldehyde. <laughs> Hilarious, absolutely. I, when I saw it today, I just thought, no, I have to share it. I just, just, it's just, but it's, it's talking about um, things. I think it was, it was the, the advert was used in the context of saying that the sale is so great in store that even things that you would not expect to happen would be happening. <laughs> yeah, so it, it just sort of took the make out of a few yeah. sports celebrities. But this particular one, I thought, I thought one today. I know, I thought, I thought this definitely won it, but. Um, it just kind of shows that at least we can laugh about things yeah. that are, um, hmm. Oh, so point. Well, the other thing now here is, um, what would you consider, Chrissy, an anniversary gift or an anniversary, you know, commemoration? Well, how would you normally set it? Would you do something, you Probably know? Probably like some kind of experience rather than a gift. Like Expe a experience. Mm. I, I like that word because somebody definitely gave their partner an experience. And he also got one back. Oh no, why? Five year anniversary of a couple. They went away to Aruba. Mm -hmm. And then this guy is apparently a YouTube um, comedian. And so he was trying to prank his girlfriend by telling her that he had been unfaithful to her. So lo and behold, they were in this wonderful hotel room says, baby, I've got something to tell you. I'm so sorry. And the girl's like, what? What, 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 what is it? I'm so sorry. I, it was only one time. It, was this, oh, it no. didn't mean anything. And the girl was like, no, no. What, what do you mean? What do you That's mean? That's horrible. And um, what did he now say to her? You know, it doesn't mean anything. I'm really sorry. And the girl's there crying her eyes. Like, we have a family, blah, 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 blah. And next thing, through her tears, she then said, I cheated too. Oh, no. Oh, no. And so the guy was like, had what, she, what? Had she really? 
that was it. Oh. She had actually seen him setting up the cameras because he set the cameras in the bedroom, focusing on where he was going to oh, tell her. No. So when she went, good. Sorry. When she went, I did it too. He was like, what? <laughs> Who is it? Who? Who? No, are you joking me? My heart is about to come out of my chest. What? Do you... And he, he, he actually, he, his reaction, obviously his one was genuine because she yeah. obviously saw him do it. So I think when I watched the video, I thought, mm, I wouldn't readily start crying. I would just sort of say, what is the matter? Because all he said was, I'm sorry, I've got something to tell you. And she started going, what have you done? You know, so hers was a bit more sort of, if you like, scripted. See? But his one was classic. See? But what, what, what kind of prank, I'm sorry, what kind of prank is that? It's like that guy that pretended to be killed in a car accident. And then, exactly, and then proposed, then proposed, proposed isn't to it? his girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, come on, I, we, we don't like things like that. <laughs> Thank you. So really? she decided, when she decided to prank him back, he didn't find it funny. And then when she then said, I saw you set it on the camera, <laughs> I went, oh, how could you? And then he kind of pounced on her and then, yeah, joke ended. But okay. seriously, that <laughs> was an experience. You're going to stay with us, right? Absolutely. Because we're going to go to a quick break and then afterwards we're going to continue with more news and I'll also be showing you my latest challenge. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show, and now it's time to show you my next challenge. Hi everyone, today I'm at the Chatham Ski Centre ready for my next challenge, which of course is skiing. Now this is something that I had to go out for about five minutes, but today I'll be taking it to the next level, hopefully, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm just having my cup of tea to warm up because the day isn't very nice. It's raining, it's cold, but that's not going to stop me from trying out this challenge, so hopefully all will go well. So I'm here with Ben, who's going to be my instructor for the day. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm well, thank you. Because quite excited about this and a little bit nervous. I was say, yeah. <laughs> a little bit nervous, I have to admit. So, can you take us through what we're going to be doing today? Yep. Um, I mean, as a complete novice, I suppose we're going to take you out over onto our nursery slope. Um, we're going to hopefully get you through some of the basics and try and keep you on your feet mainly. That might be a bit of a challenge for you. I think it's going to be a challenge Ben to keep Chris on her feet. All right, so I'm really looking forward to it. And let's go and see how I do. Get it up. So let's find out if I passed my challenge. Ben, what do you reckon? 
I think you made very, very good progress today. Um, we managed to get off of the nursery slope and actually onto the main slope, which can take people quite a few lessons, and you did really, really well, yeah. I mean, snowplow was there, maybe a bit of tweaking, but other than that, no, it was really, really good, Chrissy. Really, okay. really good. Thank you so much for Not your wonderful problem. instruction. Not a problem. Thank you. I pass. Yay. <laughs> so even though I looked ridiculous, I did pass, I did pass it. It was really good fun, actually. I enjoyed that. Thank you to all the guys down there. Are you right, Excel? I just... I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. I think it was the screams that had it for me. <laughs> That thing, I have to say, the first time that thing, it's really scary because mm -hmm. you don't expect it, expect it to pull you so, so forcefully. Right, right. But then, yeah, I was really scared of that the first time, but afterwards it was quite fun. So, yeah, it was nice. Well, you did good, at least. Kind of just the, as good the as the expert, The expert said you did good. So yeah, he good. did. Yeah, he said it takes a while to get people on the main slopes. I did it in about an hour. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> news. Yes, indeed. Um... <laughs> Now I'm going to um, actually, it's a bit of a mushy story, this one. There was a man who, um, he had apparently picked up a virus from a restaurant meal. And as a result, he had to be in hospital for a short while. Well, not long, but I think apparently he was there for about four or five days. And when he came home, because he had, he, he had a weak immune system, I think that's what happened mm. to the whole, that's what made, it, made him so ill. So when he came home, his wife had put up these lovely pictures. I mean, there's some that I've um, selected for to show. But okay. she started off with welcome home. Yeah. And it was just a lovely, you know how a kid would draw a picture and just mm -hmm. say, you know, That's welcome cute. home, daddy. And then the next picture, Darling. he, um, she kind of said, of said, you know, you were here for what seemed like forever. And she talked about how going to visit him felt like she was going on mini dates. Mm -hmm. And then of course, evenings were quiet, you know, bedtimes were lonely she kind of <laughs> did it quite a quite a lovely illustration and then he got to the point where she then said he then called to say he was coming home and she was yay finally you know you're coming home and then of course um by the time he then came home she was pleased then and said i can't wait to see you oh that's cute and she made this nice big i think it looks like a3 paper or something it was nice and big and so he had to share it so he posted it online to show he said, I just, I love her style so much. She's the best thing ever. And I'm glad that people had a chance to see that too. I just wanted to share these. Wow, and it made the news. And yeah, and in just a few days, it was viewed, guess by how, mo how many times? No idea. 230,000. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. God, this, I think this is why people just post anything and everything yeah. up. Because yeah. you just never know what's what's going to get a lot of interest and i think when someone sees something as well you've oh my gosh check this out look this is lovely and that's how it just one click that's yeah. it and it's, it's just true. it's alarming sometimes when i see certain videos and you think you've seen so and so hundreds th hundreds of thousands or you see so and so million in such yeah, a short time it's like, true. Oh! do you remember that granny i don't know this was a couple of years ago i don't know if you guys remember at home where she um she just started tweeting she, mm -hmm. she because you don't, you don't usually get sort of people that age being on Twitter, but mm. she was tweeting like things like, "Oh, I'm making an apple pie," mm -hmm. or "I'm making," and and lo, she got loads and loads of followers wow. in the millions, I think, yeah. from what I remember. But everyone was just interested in what this granny was doing. Yeah, it was so cute. cute. Yeah, that's really nice because I think so a lot of the time people tend to sort of like either post scandalous pictures on on social networking sites yeah. or insults or I mean just the other day I'm not even going to go into it I almost presented it today but I just thought it's not newsworthy on the Chrissy B show <laughs> it was two you know um, celebrities fighting on Twitter to the point where one has now closed his Twitter account because he just doesn't oh. want to get involved anymore and I think it's nice to have something positive you know for you to see yeah, that nice. it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom and dreary and things like this I, I do like it that's why I thought you had to make it in today for the news <laughs> it was newsworthy for today I, I'm all I'm all about the Aww. mushy stuff anyway Hmm, that's I a am. Idea. I am. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> <Ooh>, hello. <laughs> okay. Another topic now. I think. I think probably McDonald's should probably end up sponsoring our Again. show at this rate. So it was a positive McDonald's story. Well, you could say that. I found this happened over the summer. A Bristol, a Bristol couple, I should say, in Bristol, they um, had their wedding reception in McDonald's. Oh, I remember this. I was shocked. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. I wasn't was like, sure if he had, if anyone had, and I thought I had to bring it. Yeah, to, yeah, but you can tell the, you can tell the viewers we can they weren't watching that one. The newlyweds 
They did. Sorry, I just think it's a cheapskate. <laughs> that's, what, that's what everyone's thinking. <laughs> Who would get married in McDonald's, honestly? Sorry, Excel, go ahead. I'm just cracking up on this one as well. But they were, um, the newlyweds, they had gone to their local registry, got married, and then were driven in a white limousine to McDonald's. Accompanied by <laughs> 30... So they could afford the limo, but not... They were a company, so it's not as if they're exactly cheap's case, they just wanted something simple. Um, they were accompanied by 33 guests and they dined on meals worth a total of 150 pounds. <laughs> That's the cheapest wedding in history. The manager didn't close the restaurant for them, he reserved an area for the group and gave them a bottle of champagne for the occasion. However, they weren't allowed to open it because you can't consume alcohol in McDonald's. <laughs> so they had to drink it when they left the restaurant. Oh. Um, the groom was reported to have ordered a chicken legend meal. Whoop, whoop. Oh. And his wife ate a box of chicken McNuggets. Yeah, because obviously she didn't want to get her dress dirty. You can imagine biting into a burger. Yeah. Mm. Um, apparently, they were both shaking throughout the ceremony because they were so nervous, and everybody found their reception at McDonald's very interesting. Did they dance? Did they have music? Uh, it doesn't look like it. <clears throat> they admitted that um, people staring at their wedding party as they ate, you know, it happened, but they didn't mind. And um, when asked why the groom had chosen McDonald's to hold his reception in, he joked saying, Everyone loves to eat at Mackey D's. Oh, maybe they didn't have, genuinely didn't have any so money. So it was but, probably... But they, that's the thing. But you, you can afford some, a limo yeah, and that's a wedding dress. Saying. Yeah. Why can't you afford some... But if, anyway, I think some that, people that's just what they like want to, to do. do... I think some people just like to do the whole... Um, what's the word? Just something different. Something odd. That is different. So mm. I think, I mean, now we're, we're still talking about it. I didn't see it before. I didn't know of it before. And yeah. I'm still talking about it now. This is months later. So I think it's just something different. Because I think it's not so much of a fact that they couldn't afford it. Because they obviously had a limo. <laughs> I think it's just a case of, yeah, just, let's just, let's, let's go against convention. Who wants to have a reception in a hall? Let's do it in McDonald's. Why not? I no, suppose you save yourself a lot of hassle with all the seating arrangements and like... There you go. Putting this person here and that person there because they don't get along and all that stuff. So you just go to McDonald's and queue up and have a nice happy meal Absolute or something. Happy meal without indeed. The, without the same music, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Excel, we're going to talk eyebrows after the break. Absolutely. Are you ready for that? Have you got oh, your yes. questions ready? Because we're going to be joined by two lovely ladies who are going to do, be doing some demonstrations as well. And we're going to be asking them lots of questions. So do stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back and now we're going to speak all about eyebrows and I have with me Jessica and Leanne from Annecy's Spa Clinic. Hello. Did I say it right? Hi. Yes, yeah. Spa and Clinic, sorry. <laughs> well now we've managed to kind of persuade Excel, she didn't know she was actually going to do this, but we've managed to persuade Excel to be our model for today because you're going to demonstrate a couple of things, aren't you? What yeah. are you going to show us today? So I'm going to show threading mm -hmm. and Jessica's going to show waxing. Okay, now just tell us a bit first about um, how we should care for our eyebrows and maybe what the best kind of treatment is. Okay, um, so basically eyebrows now are a big thing. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you look, celebrities, television, you'll see that they have they make a big fuss over eyebrows. Yeah. Um, <coughs> people like to look after the eyebrows in different ways, so threading, waxing, Looking, mm -hmm. um, thin is a no go. So thin eyebrows are not in fashion at the moment. Really, um, thick eyebrows, nice thick, shapely eyebrows are really in at the moment. Do they make um, when you have your eyebrows quite thick? Do they make your eyes stand out more? Would you say? Yeah, and they also make you look younger as well because it mm. gives you sort of like um, an innocent look, like an untouched look. Uh -huh. Whereas, like, really thin eyebrows are in in, like, the early You 90s. see, everybody, I bet you didn't know that one. <laughs> thick eyebrows are in because they make you look younger. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to thicken my eyebrows. <laughs> okay, so, so you're going to show us, first of all, the, yeah, so the threading? Yeah, so I'll we'll demonstrate the threading. Have you had threading before? 
No, but I've heard of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've had it before. It's, it, I don't think it hurts as much. I as don't like tweezing, you see. So it kind of feels like... Is that like... Oh, it looks like floss. <laughs> Kind of feels like the good thing tweezing. about threading, though, it doesn't make you as red as waxing. Mm -hmm. So when you've waxed, mm -hmm. you'll be really red after it. So yeah. men do like to have this treatment really? rather than waxing. Why yeah. is that? Um, just, just because, because of the redness. Yeah, the redness, and they can quickly <laughs> go Saying, out and sneak out the really, salon. I haven't really been to a salon. Right, so if you can Come on, next. So we haven't got long. No, no time for for being scared. She's seriously scared. You can you believe do. it? No, yeah. I don't like. Mm -hmm. I need you to support the eyebrows. So with this hand. If you can stretch, I think we this picked the wrong model. And then the other hand, stretch that bit. If you can slouch down a bit more, I'm a bit short, so. I find with threading, it really depends on the kind of therapist you have doing it. Okay. Because you hear of all the scary ready? stories mm -hmm. of, oh my gosh, I had threading done and she just made me look red and it was horrible and it was painful. Mm -hmm. But I think it's how rough they are with it. Yeah. And with the way that we're we're, we're trained in doing it. It's about being gentle, getting the fine hairs up, okay. without causing trauma to the skin, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. Where a lot of people's sort of idea of threading is it's just like pulling like masses no, well, of no, like I tweezing I experience. Done, I had yeah. it done once and I found it actually oh, more comfortable than mm -hmm. than like waxing <laughs> like, mm -hmm. or, or tweezing, tweezing when you yeah. pull like every individual. Exactly. How does it feel, Excel? <laughs> well, it kind of. I have to say, I felt it when she started. Yeah. But I'm kind of used to it a bit now. Okay. Yeah. So what do you normally do? Do you normally pluck? I can, but I tend to um, shape them with an eyebrow shaper. Okay. Alrighty. Well, you look quite comfortable. It doesn't look too too yeah, uncomfortable it's not for too you. Okay, you let go. Now, I think you mentioned something in the green room about high definition brows. What does that involve? So okay. high definition brows is basically like a seven step brow treatment seven steps yeah it's all about sort of um it's really good if you kind of want to create a new brow shape mm -hmm. and you don't know where to start okay. it's also really good if you're trying to grow through your brows mm -hmm. and you want to kind of fill them out and and fill in the gaps okay. so basically what we do is we tint Mm -hmm. We wax. Tint is what, just for the viewers that don't so, know? So um, tint is basically almost like what you would do is dye in your eyebrows. Okay. Um, so you can do things from brown to brown black, okay. or you've got a lighter colour. So if you are fair, you can still do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we tint all the, the brow hairs, and then we um, thread the finer hairs, especially okay. around the top. Yeah. We wax underneath and wax your oh. uni brow. <laughs> just my uni brow. I haven't got one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it tries um, to come back sometimes. But the main thing about HD brows is creating that perfect shape for you. The, a shape that you're comfortable with, right. but a shape that really suits your face as well. So it's all about measuring your brows, making sure that your arch begins where it should, and okay. um, the length of it isn't too long but not too short. Um, and then we also teach you how to like pencil okay. or sort of um, using a palette, filling in your brows. So if you are going out for the evening, mm -hmm. you can do your eyebrows and it really just finishes off your whole makeup. Okay. really draws attention to your eyes as well. Yeah. So if you're someone that, you know, is a bit, oh, I don't like this feature of my face and that, then it really draws attention to your eyes. Your eyebrows are eyes. amazing. I'm really, I'm really staring at her eyebrows now. I'm stopped listening. I was looking at her eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, really I've penciled good. mine in. Have you? So, really yeah, good. so it really just sort of finishes everything off. It gives you a nice groomed look. Yeah. Um, but it also educates you on how to take care of your brows as well. Okay, that's really good. So you're right there, my darling. Should we try, should we compare the waxing? <laughs> stay there, stay there, because we're going to get some waxing yeah. now. <laughs> Okay, so let's, let's let's compare with the with the waxing and how it feels. Right, sorry. This is this is the price we have to pay to look good, you see. <laughs> All right. So, have you had waxing done before, Axel? No, I haven't actually. Well, not on my face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't go any further. That's fine. <laughs> now, are there particular the um, maybe shapes you should have for according to your face shape? Um, yeah, everybody's different. I mean, like we do get clients coming in saying, "I want." Um, eyebrows like this celebrity and this celebrity but sometimes we have to explain to them that they, they might not good. necessarily suit that eyebrow shape so right. whatever their face shape whatever suits them what would so suit me do you think um <clears throat> you've got quite high cheekbones so mm -hmm. not too archy just like, like a little mm -hmm. soft roundness to them yeah. in the corner so yeah okay yeah, All right. I'd love to do your eyebrows. Oh, actually. would you? Yes. <laughs> we had time. Remember during the break? How long does it take to do? Well, it takes 45 minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a quick express eyebrow treatment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Excel's having her, her eyebrows waxed there. It's comfy so far, Excel. Mm. 
Do you have any questions, Excel, yourself? Well, I think they're getting answered now, shaping my eyebrows very nicely indeed. Well, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm trusting that I haven't seen the, the <laughs> ones they have. Uh, they will make me look fabulous. Well, she didn't squeal then. That's a, that's a, good, well, um, yeah, that's no. a good sign. Yeah. Now, how often should you actually get your eyebrows done? Is it just when they start to show up, like yeah, again? Or? Um, threading lasts for four to five weeks, and waxing will probably last up to three weeks. Okay, so, so threading, threading lasts longer. Yeah, threading is longer because it gets all the tiny, tiny hairs. Yeah. Whereas waxing, it just gets the you know the more obvious hairs that you can oh, okay. see so all this right. is why like we if you you're really quite fair around here you'll get all the vellus hairs the fairer hairs okay so the threading is really good to pick that up okay and the waxing will just pick up the obvious oh that's really good and what about people sometimes that um they sometimes dye their eyebrows according to their hair color should we actually when we change our hair color should we like also dye our eyebrows um not necessarily no. you don't have mm -hmm. to i mean we do have, um, I don't know if you've heard of the Scouse Brows, that um, which is, my, my opinion's a no-no, where they <laughs> dye their, their brows really black with blonde hair. Yeah. But um, a lot of girls are having that now. It's Didn't Marilyn Monroe do that as well? I think. Yeah, she I had think really she blonde hair and she had yeah, these dark she had eyebrows. really dark eyebrows. I think now it's just a fashion statement. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, what you, it's what's in right now, to okay. be honest. So that, well, that's, is that in then? Or? Um, <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't personally do it. Oh, you wouldn't? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Excel, tell us, com compare the two. We've got like a minute left. Now, I can see some redness on the wax inside. Let me see the yeah. other side. I can kind of feel, yeah, because this side, I have to say, this side is still, it's not painful. Yeah, but, but I can you still, kind of feel like. Yeah, I can yeah. still feel that no, something's no happening. But there's no redness at all on that not, side. No. Yeah. There is and no. what about pain, pain uh, related? What well, the say? thing is, I have quite a high threshold for pain, you see, so I don't really kind of, but I have to say, between the two of them, I felt the tweet, the threading more mm -hmm. because I suppose it was yanking out the hairs but when yeah. it came to the the waxing bit it yeah. was all at once mm -hmm. kind okay. of thing so for me I would say the threading was slightly more painful well that side's going to last longer now <laughs> I know I feel like I'm just going to go thread this <laughs> All right, yeah, that's well, great. I like it. Yeah, it looks good. I can see from here. I can see the difference. Nice Aww, and tidy now. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, ladies, thank you so, so much. You're welcome. And I'll hold you to that about doing my eyebrows for yeah, me. Definitely. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Jazz. That's all right. All right, so after the break, we're going to continue with some more news. And also, I'll, I'll be answering a question from a viewer. Do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we continue with the news with the lovely and newly eyebrowed <laughs> done Excel. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. It's okay. I shall be answering a question from a viewer. Now, this person says, I love making things and have realised I have great talent in making shoes, sandals and jewellery. I'm thinking about setting up my own business, but don't know where to start. And I'm also scared of failure. What would you do, Chrissy? Now, um... As I do say, I'm not an expert, a business expert or anything like that, but I was doing a bit of research on this as well. There's a really, really good um, website you can go to, which is gov.uk actually. And they've got all these templates that you can actually write your business plan. They've got business support helplines and they can help you start your business, but also give you the steps to actually grow your business as well. So before you do anything, I would advise you to go to these kind of websites, get all the information that you can get and you know, do your business plan and then start from there. Don't be afraid to ask for help because many, many people do when they do start their own business. Now, the other side of things where you say that you fear the failure, and I think fear of failing is very normal for everybody. I don't think there's anyone out there that can say they've gone for something big and they haven't felt a bit nervous or they haven't had those kind of doubts in their head saying, oh, what if it goes wrong or what if it's the wrong decision? Everyone goes through that. It's a normal, it's a normal thing to do. But the thing is, I think it's worse if you have a kind of dream 
you have some you have a goal to do something in your life and then you're always there wondering because you know you didn't try for it and you're always be wondering what if I'd done this what if I would tried that what if it actually worked out so I think it's better to try and maybe not get to where you want to be at that exact moment than not try at all so but do obviously with most businesses they are really hard to start up it's not going to be like you're going to be making profit immediately some do obviously but so I would say even when tough times come keep persevering have that vision in your head about what you want to achieve and just go for it at least you've done something at least you've tried and I think that alone gives a person confidence and also believe in yourself and when times get hard keep going because everyone faces difficulties when they're starting their business so I hope that's helped you and I do wish you all the best for your new business venture excel oh by the way if you'd like to also ask sorry if you'd like to ask me a question is or would like to ask me what I would do in your situation do email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv back to excel with the news you're right, my love. With my, with my freshly plucked eyebrows, I'm loving it. And that it. was really quick, you know. And it I made know. A difference. Actually, you know, thank you. Are you trying to say I wasn't looking beautiful? No, before? you were looking beautiful, but you look even more beautiful now. If that was fishing actually possible. For compliment. <laughs> fishing. I was fishing. I got it. Okay. My next story is a lovely, lovely one. A royal male worker hmm. has been hailed as a hero for going above and beyond the call of duty. You know how they leave you a card if they want to deliver a post and they leave you so like, you know, yeah, so we missed annoying. you kind of thing, mm. kind of you have to go and pick it up elsewhere kind of thing. Right. Well, someone got a um, left something for you card and it spoke about how they had witnessed their chicken escaping from their backyard. <laughs> I'm sorry. What it is, is that the when the postman <coughs> came past this yeah. house mm -hmm. they saw that this the house he had come as the house he had come to had obviously had chickens in the backyard and he saw one of the chickens escaping oh. through the hedge okay and so he left a note oh bless. and the note actually says saw your chicken escape through the hedge <laughs> to the side of the building and go into 4b's garden at 13 15. number of <laughs> items one chicken could not be delivered because it's too large and it ticked because on the box on the Aww. paper you say could not be delivered because and he ticked it's too large <laughs> so that's one way of um tell, letting your customers know that their chicken has escaped oh, from lovely. the garden oh that was nice of him absolutely lovely i wish my postman did that yeah. <clears throat> well do you have chickens no okay just people be a bit more caring mm. that's all <laughs> it's nice so um so yeah so that i thought that was another feel-good story to talk about um Something slightly um, painful now, after having my eyebrows plucked, I thought I'd um, bring this up. See, as if I knew I was going to get my eyebrows plucked. Well, a lady needed reconstructive surgery mm -hmm. after she got bitten by a venomous spider. Oh, God. We always have to speak about spiders on this show. I they know. always come up somewhere, don't they? Our Chrissy loves spiders. I don't mind them that much. Cockroaches I can't stand, but spiders I can deal with. <laughs> Ooh, cockroaches gives me idea um <laughs> that's been done actually on this show they did bring a whole box of cockroaches no I, I, have, I have a very good imagination you mustn't forget that i might just do something <laughs> else okay so, um the 22 year old lady who's from the netherlands had gone to italy on holiday and um there one of the mediterranean breed of spiders unfortunately um had bit her but she didn't realize because she woke up with a painful ear and then went to the doctors there and got a, an antihistamine because it was yeah. starting to swell and everything. And so um, she, she got prescribed an antihistamine. But when the failing didn't, I'm sorry, when the swelling didn't Ooh, go down. That. Yes. So Gosh. that left a very ugly um, scar. And by the time she returned home, it had become infected. And that black scab fell off to oh, create oh, that. No. So her ear actually fell off completely. And... Um, so by, by this time now she had gone back to the Netherlands. So a doctor in Netherlands who then made some surgery oh, on her ear and actually ended up using part of, um, it was part of her uh, ribs and formed tissue from her ribs Did and formed another, another ear tissue to make it look. Oh, that's so good. that's the well reconstruction. Done. And um, it's ended up forming, but, but I think this was the first evidence apparently that shows that spider venom can be dangerous because whereas before you've sort of seen that, you know, it's not generally very dangerous. It can maybe cause a bit of irritation around so the area. So which country was this in, sorry? In Italy. Italy, Yeah, she had You don't expect in. that to happen there. Because I went to Kenya when, when I went with my husband to Kenya, we went for three weeks and we were on this safari and we, mm. we, we survived the whole three weeks without any incidents, nothing at all, no insects, no animals, nothing like that. 
on the day we were leaving, this spider just dropped from our hotel, um, on the, from the ceiling, right onto my husband's neck and bit him. And it was, it was quite painful, it was quite a big spider. But I had this, I don't know, these, these kits that you can buy in the chemist and yeah. they kind of like suck out the poison. So I got, it was quite good actually, I got to use it. <laughs> oh, of, course, of course, I prefer my husband not to be bitten by a spider, but anyway. So I got this thing and it sucked out whatever was there straight away and he was yeah. fine. Mm. But it's just like, well, that was quick you just thinking never and quick acting. know. Yeah, I had it in my bag all the time because yeah. going on safari, you expect sort of something yeah. maybe to go wrong. So I had yeah. all, everything, first aid kit, everything. Oh, gosh. But you just don't expect it to happen somewhere like Italy. I think it's probably the, the, because Italy, I suppose, it's slightly warm as well, isn't it? It's kind of, it's quite, so these creepy crawlies can yeah. be, I mean, we get creepy crawlies here when it's warm. So I suppose it's one of those kind of things. But you should get one of those kits, you know, they're really good. <laughs> I gave one to my dad as well, because he goes out in the farms and in Cyprus with all the snakes and stuff. So. Mm. Oh, yeah. snakes, that's another topic. Can't stand yeah. them. Oh, We've got about three minutes left, Excel. Do well, you have time for another article? There's a bit of a funny story here. <clears throat> A thief was um, going to steal from a house in Hull and um, got into a bit of a misfortune because he got stuck in the window. <laughs> and what did he do? Oh, he called for it. help from the person <laughs> who he was robbing from and asked him to get the ambulance. <laughs> but of course, you know, as you do, you see someone in need, you call for help. He dialed 999, but lo and behold, the police attended. <laughs> And got him arrested. He um, apparently had been, he was discovered dangling from the window when the <laughs> owner of the house went into the bathroom in the middle of the night and um, found him stuck in there. So oh he couldn't no. come in, he couldn't go back out. And he, apparently he was stuck there for an hour. Oh God. So um, by the time he accepted that he wasn't going anywhere, he just asked the, the, the owner of the house to just call for help, really. And so... Oh, they must have had a giggle. I think Mr. Plod came and took him away. And um, he was promptly arrested and... Um, he admitted to his crime and he's currently in police custody. Gosh, <laughs> why not in a hospital bed, I wonder? But um, yeah. But how much damage has he done to himself when he got stuck in a window? Well, there you go. There you go. But I'm just, it's just hilarious that the way, I think what actually makes me, um, it's a bit like when someone is, imagine you set out to actually hurt someone, but you ended up being in a position where you then had to be yeah, vulnerable yourself. And I think that's just instant justice. I mean, I even like if he it. didn't want to, he didn't mean any harm physically speaking, but of course, when you burgle someone's house, you mm. hurt them emotionally, don't exactly. you? Exactly. Because exactly. people are scared in their own home after that. They, you know, they don't feel comfortable. They got their really like precious belongings missing. So mm -hmm. you do hurt them. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. you, you can't really sort of, maybe, yes, he could have been somebody who was just hungry. He needed something, but you don't know. We've heard horror stories about people who have met those they were going yeah. to burgle, met them in the house and it could turn really ugly. And you, you know, maybe he didn't come intending to hurt him or kill him or whoever, but you don't know what he would have done when he was desperate, caught with his hand yeah. in the cookie jar. What would that he have done? That happened to me once, not caught in. <laughs> burgling but someone broke into my oh, no. flat at the time and um, we left the window open and I heard all this clash banging I thought something just fell from the kitchen so I went out and it just for some reason it just felt really I just I was just about to turn the corner into the kitchen and it it just went deadly quiet and I felt really uncomfortable oh so I went back into my room I, I locked the door and I woke my husband up and there was actually two men in the house and when my husband went out to see they ran <clears throat> they ran off through the front door but when we looked, the, there were two knives, big knives missing from the, the thing. So obviously, as I'd walked around, they probably just about to go the in the corner, they were ready. already holding the knives. I was like, oh my God. My husband told me so badly, why did you go out? Why did you do think <laughs> you got really upset with me. Oh my I wasn't days. going to investigate because I thought there were burglars. I just thought something had fallen yeah, down. Exactly. But then I just thought that really because like... Because you would mm. do though. When you hear a noise, you kind of just want... You don't really think yeah. that, oh yeah, I someone's didn't in my think, house. I didn't think, but then that just stopped me. Something just stopped me and I went back. But anyway, we've run out of time, well. Excel. Oof, Thank gosh. you so much for well, the lovely well. news. You're very welcome. And we will see you again next time on the show. If you'd like to contact me at any point with a question or anything like that, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. And if you want more information about the program, you can visit the website chrissybshow.tv. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.